So the question, what is sexual orientation, is one that I've written about and I think a lot about. There are a few different approaches to it. One is the one that I've, I've defended in print. Um, so I'll go over what I've defended in print and then say some larger things. So what I've said in print is basically that when we think about what the current taxonomy and understanding of sexual orientation is, it seems to fall into two, maybe three, if you're lucky, categories. There's gay and straight, and sometimes people throw bisexual in. And what it means to be gay or straight gets a variety of answers. Sometimes people say things like, well, to be gay is to be attracted to people of the same sex. Sometimes they say it's to be attracted to people of the same gender. Sometimes they move back and forth between the two. Often they'll say things like, to be straight is to be attracted to people of the opposite sex. Um, they'll use terms like same and opposite, as well as sex and gender, and move back and forth between these. And as someone who identifies as genderqueer, um, it's not clear to me that there's any space for me or people like me, much less people who are intersex, in this kind of taxonomy. It's very constraining as far as what the possibilities are when describing your sexual orientation. Moreover, it seems to come out of a history of distinguishing between people who have certain, a certain reproductive viability or, or status and those who do not. So when we think about these categories, it seems that there's a, a number of metaphysical and political problems with them. Metaphysically, it's problematic because it's really unclear exactly what these categories mean or what the extension of them are. And then politically, it's problematic because it comes out of this history of marginalizing people who were not seen as cis-heteronormative, that is, both cisgender and heterosexual. Um, so when I thought about what are we trying to get at when we have these kinds of categories? What could be a better alternative that'd be more metaphysically perspicuous and less politically problematic? What I propose in that paper is that our categories should do two things, at least. First, it should distinguish between features of people's bodies and their gender expression and gender identity. And then also it should distinguish between um, who you're attracted to based on your own gender and then just who you're attracted to. So what I propose in that paper is that our sexual, the way we can think of sexual orientation is as one's disposition to be sexually engaged with people of particular sexes and or genders, where we can understand that is what sort of bodies are you attracted to and what sorts of gender expressions and identities are you attracted to. And moreover, understanding one's own sexual orientation purely in terms of who one is attracted to rather than in terms of the relationship between who one is attracted to and your own gender or sex. So what that would mean, for example, is if you have two people, one is, say, a cisgender man and one is a cisgender woman, and they're both attracted to men, they have the same sexual orientation on my view rather than one of them being gay and the other one being straight.